So you know that feeling when you're staring at like a wall of trees, like just a bunch of trees in the distance, especially in autumn when the trees are full of orange and yellow and gold and they just seem to shimmer. Like you know that they're individual leaves, but you can't seem to make them out. I mean, if you've never had that experience, I have, and we're gonna try to paint it today. Hello, my name is Colby Bloom, and this is day four of Painting the Wilderness World of Color, my 10-day watercolor challenge. Today, we are painting a scene I like to call Autumn Trails because we are painting a river and a little trail by the river surrounded by autumn colored trees. So the thing about this project is that you might look at it initially and think, wow, so much detail. And so this is a really good example of how, especially when you're painting landscapes, you don't have to paint every single subject exactly how it is. You just have to imitate it. You have to kind of imply, you know, what's there. For example, in this project, we're going to imply that there are thousands and thousands of these leaves shimmering in the background of these trees, but what we're really doing is just painting a whole bunch of blobs and adding a few accents here and there. So if you're not really sure what I'm talking about, keep watching and you'll see. So the main theme behind Autumn Trails is that a messy middle does not always dictate a messy ending. In fact, sometimes we need the messy middle to make the painting doable. And I'm going to show you what I mean. So we're painting a line of trees along a river. And in order to paint all of this and not, you know, like lose our minds, we are make, we're gonna make a big mess first. Most of what we're gonna paint is going to look messy and like what's even happening. And then we're gonna add the details, the small details after that will pull everything together. So let's start. The first thing after I prepare my sketchbook with tape and binder clips is I'm going to sketch where the river is just so I have an idea of where to place everything. So I'm starting with a curve that kind of curves down into the bottom of the page um, for the left side of the river and then another kind of crackled, you know, line uh, going on to the right side and then a horizon line. So there are three lines there, right? The, the, the two bottom lines are where the river is and then the top line uh, delineates where the ground is. So where the trail is like beneath the trees next to the river. Okay, so I got my paper wet and then I made a really, really light gray sky using, honestly, it could have been any number of things. You can make gray just by like combining lots of different colors. I probably used indigo, like a light, light, light value, meaning a watery indigo. I decided to widen the river so that the bank on the other side of that river is a little smaller. And then I wet the river so it is wet. I primed it with clean water. Um, I dried that sky first, right? I had that light, light gray sky, dried it, I wet the river with clean water, and now I'm taking some tallow turquoise that is pretty watery, and I'm outlining the, the outer edges of the river. So I want the center of the river to be the most light. So that's why I'm starting on the edges of the river, and then I'm using a thirsty brush and water to kind of gently move more color into the river. I'm starting a lot lighter than I'm going to be. I'm gonna make things a lot darker as we go along. Uh, now I'm going to add a, just a little bit of, um, I added a little bit of viridian to my tallow turquoise to make it slightly greener, just like slightly greener. And um, then I'm using my size six brush instead of my size 10 and pulling the edges just a little more into the center. Remember, one of the most important things here is to maintain the lightness of the center of the river, but we also want to showcase some ripples, right? Um, some multicolored ripples. And uh, so I was just using kind of gentle zigzags to do that. Now I'm using Cascade Green from Daniel Smith to kind of outline the sides of the river to be an even darker kind of green turquoise mix. So I've used tallow turquoise, viridian, 
um, cascade green, and, and here's a little bit of cerulean in the mix. So lots of different colors going on, but lots of different colors, especially when you're trying to paint moving water, is helpful because it shows all of the different you know, light, all of the different colors that are reflecting, it makes the water look like it's moving. So that's kind of where I'm stopping with the river. I started light and then I gradually grew darker around the edges because the river is supposed to be darker around the edges and very quite light in the middle. I would also say more green, like dark green around the edges and gradually getting more blue toward the middle. That's also something that's probably true. Now I'm going to, I let that dry, the river dry, and now I'm laying down the underlayer for the trees. So that underlayer is quin gold um, mixed with a little bit of burnt sienna and lots and lots of water. See how light it is, lots and lots of water. And I put a little bit more vibrant quin gold in there so it wasn't quite, you know, quite so brown. Um, but this layer is mostly so that we can get uh, so like the dry spots that we're going to have as we continue painting these leaves will be that kind of light yellow ochre kind of layer. So um, I'm doing that under layer uh, on the top trees, and I'm also doing it at uh, on that bank that's on the right, left side left side of the river. And then I'm going to let that dry. So revisiting what I said earlier in this tutorial... When we are painting the trees, we're painting all these different colors. We're painting thousands, if not millions of leaves, right? So many leaves. We can't possibly paint every single one of those leaves individually. So what we're going to do instead is paint a whole big mess and try to imply lots of leaves. We're trying to give the, you know, idea, we're trying to provide a, a, a texture that make it, makes it look like there are a lot of leaves. And we're trying to also do that with depth. So this is a foliage brush. I'm going to show you what it is earlier. I mean, in just a little bit. But we're, I'm using a foliage brush to add some texture using various, using different colors, like fall colors. So Quinn Gold, Burnt Umber, Scarlet Lake, um, so here's a, a, my DIY foliage brush that I created by cutting up an old Princeton Neptune brush. I cut it up so that it's textured to use specifically to create this kind of like foliage-like texture. Um, I would not recommend using a round brush uh, to do this because, or, or at least a round brush you regularly use to do this because it will ruin the tip of it. That's why I specifically used an old brush that I had and cut it up. I cut up the bristles in order to create a foliage brush. Okay, I don't normally do this, but I'm gonna do a mini lesson within a lesson. So this is uh, to demonstrate the foliage brush again, right? So this is just an old, like I said, an old paintbrush that I cut up. And uh, you can use a cheap paintbrush, you can use, a, it doesn't really matter, and I know a lot of people <laughs> probably are gonna be like, how could you cut up such a nice paintbrush? It was old and I needed it more for this, right? So I'm taking this foliage brush, uh, which is an old round paintbrush that I just cut up, and I'm tapping it like uh, perpendicular to the page so that I can get this foliage texture. The way that I get that texture is because of these uneven bristles, right? So some of them are longer than others, and so there's gaps. There's these natural gaps that show up where you can see little pockets of white space. So the way that you get that without a foliage brush is through scumbling. Scumbling is a technique that you can use with a round brush. This is a round six, where basically you're just making like jerky movements all over. That's random. It's like dancing across the page. I would recommend using a round brush that's not like your nicest so that you don't really care about the point. Another option is to use what's called a reservoir brush. This is a super specialty niche brush. This is a Shimioni brand. You don't have to have this brush. I just, I only just barely purchased one myself. But the benefit of using a reservoir brush is that it has that thin point. So a reservoir brush is like, it's like a round brush that has another tiny round brush coming out of it. And the point is that you can use the tiny round brush like a liner and then the larger brush holds the water. But you can also use it for scumbling to make a foliage effect because it has um, that, that longer 
thinner tip so that you can kind of do scumbling and get that foliage effect. So three options for you to create the foliage effect. You can use the DIY foliage brush. You can buy foliage brushes too. I just honestly like my DIY one better. Um, you can use the reservoir brush or you can use a round brush through scumbling. So I'm adding texture. I'm adding texture with a bunch of different colors here, right? I used Quinn Gold. I'm using some Cascade Green to make this light green. I added some Scarlet Lake. And one thing I want to keep in mind is I'm trying to do this in layers so that the left side of the trees are, the colors there are more muted and so they're not as bright and they are lighter so that they are more watery, so they have more white in them because more muted and lighter creates the a distance effect, right? Versus on the right side, those right side trees, those are like the foreground trees or like the midground trees, really. Those are going to be the brightest, the leaves are going to be the, the biggest, and it's going to be the most saturated. So as I'm kind of laying down this foliage texture, as I'm using this foliage brush, I'm keeping that in mind where I want the right side to be the most vibrant, the leaves to be the biggest, and it to be the most saturated and darkest values. Um, and I'm making sure to alternate the different colors that I'm using, right? Um, and to leave spaces in between. I'm not just like covering up everything and then layering on. I'm intentionally leaving behind little streaks of, of white space, right? Of that dry space in between those leaves. That's the whole point of using a foliage brush to add texture is it intentionally leaves behind those pockets of dry space. So now what I'm going to do before I finish layering on everything, I'm going to add pockets of shadow. And you're initially going to put this on and be like, this is a mess, <laughs> this is a giant mess, but bear with me, okay? So I'm using, um, I, I'm not e exactly sure, I might be using Galaxy Black here, I might be using Payne's Gray, but just some kind of darkish gray color to add shadow in between some of the trees and especially along the bottom, because this is where grove of trees have shadows between the trees, right? And you, it, it, it's going to provide a lot of depth, so, um, I didn't have a particular rhyme or reason for where to put those shadows. I just layered it mostly along the bottom and in between where I think there might be individual trees. Like I just kind of, you know, went, went with the flow. I didn't, I, I, it was a really intuitive process. So then I let those shadows dry and I'm slowly adding another layer. So my first layer of leaves is dry and now I'm adding another layer. So um, I'm slowly getting a little bit more pigmented, uh, a little bit brighter, but I always want to remember, I always want to maintain the gradient, right? Where brightest, most saturated is on the right and it slowly gets desaturated and more muted on the left. And um, so I added more vibrant colors. Scarlet Lake is my most vibrant, most important color there. Now I'm adding trunks. So at this point I was like, I've added a lot of leaves. This is where I'm going to add trunks. Meaning I'm starting with just a few thin lines of trunks that kind of fork up into trees. And I'm painting them mainly in the shadows. So I'm painting on top of the shadows with a slightly darker dark color like Payne's Gray or Galaxy Black. And I'm just going for it. Like I'm adding a bunch of these trunks. I'm also going to add some white trunks because some of these trees just may be aspen trees, right? So I'm gonna add some white trunks because it also adds just an element of interest. This is Dr. Paige Martin's Bleed Proof White. It's, it's basically just white gouache. It's really intense white gouache. So I'm using a size two brush to add a bunch of trunks. I did not have an idea of where each individual tree was before I did it. I just put this whole wall of leaves and then I put a bunch of trunks. They're not supposed to go to individual places. We're just adding leaves and trunks. So there's no real design except for trying to make the right side of the trees darker and bigger and more saturated, right? Okay, so we're gonna come back to the trees later. Um, now we're going to paint that ground right next to the river. And I'm starting with some burnt sienna 
adding a little bit of, um, I added a little bit of Galaxy Black to Burnt Sienna to do that darker, that darker layer. Basically, I'm just adding layers of brown a little bit at a time, uh, using dry brush texture sometimes, um, and just kind of doing zigzags. When in doubt, do zigzags. That is like my mantra <laughs> for painting landscapes, right? So, and I'm making the edges, the edges nearest the water darker. And then in some of those white spaces that I intentionally left as I'm doing these zigzags, I'm going to put some fall color because maybe there are some fall leaves on the ground or it just kind of ties all of this together. And then as I kind of built the values of these dark browns, I'm gonna add the very darkest along the edges. That's the nice thing about starting light to dark is you slowly build, right? You start light and then you slowly build and build and build and uh, especially adding really, really dark low lights can kind of bring a lot of depth into the piece. The same thing goes with these trees, right? I'm going to take some really, really saturated, meaning there's not a ton of water and uh, there's a lot of pigment, Scarlet Lake, and, uh, and this is actually gold ochre. Um, and I'm going to add just a few flicks, just a few flecks of darker leaves on top of those trees to kind of bring even more depth to those scenes. So that is the background trees. Now I'm doing the exact same thing, the exact same process with these foreground trees, um, but I am making them darker. And actually I, didn't actually, I didn't really do this on purpose, but the end result happened this way where it was just, these trees were so much darker and they looked shadowed almost. So I'm adding all the same colors. I added shadows in between the leaves. Um, I'm trying to add depth here and kind of, you know, make it not so muddy, but then I just decided to lean into the muddy. Again, I'm doing the exact same thing that I did with the trees behind where I did bunches of leaves and then I did the shadows in between and now I'm gonna do the trunks, the white trunks to kind of put everything together. And I decided, well, because everything looks more muted, it looks more shadow, maybe that side of the river is cast in shadow. And you know, that's one of those things that was unintentional but worked out to my favor. So now I'm going to paint the ripples in the river, some more details. I'm taking some tallow turquoise and just painting in zigzags, right? And you can see, I'm just painting in zigzags. I'm also painting like little eye shapes. And then I decided to do some like sideways, not so much horizontal, but also some different directions because one thing about rivers is that sometimes the water flows in lots of different directions, right? Um, and then to kind of put, every, put it all together and add some texture onto the river, I'm adding just a few blobs, strips of white gouache on top of the river. In, uh, in a few places, not all over. Um, this is super intuitive. I'm just kind of like trying to balance it out so it's not so much one side looks more than the other side. And then I'm going to take, I'm taking some very, very saturated Scarlet Lake. Uh, I added a tiny bit of Cerulean to it to make it like a, a more muted Scarlet Lake also, but I'm just trying to add a little bit more detail, a little bit more texture really, some small like dots of texture onto the, the foreground grove of trees over there. And then I'm going to splatter Scarlet Lake and Gold Ochre uh, I used my palette to cover up the lake so that the, the splatters don't go onto the lake, but I'm, I'm splattering on orange and gold ochre onto the whole scene to add even more texture, especially when you're doing autumn scenes. Splatters are a really great technique to make everything kind of look like they're, it's coming together because splatters often look like the texture that you get with autumn leaves. And there you go. So... I know that, uh, you know, with tutorials like this, I speed them up so that you can watch them in fewer than 20 minutes. Uh, but really the main gist I want you to get when you're painting this one is that we're not trying to paint trees. We're trying to imply that there are trees. We're trying to give the effect of leaves, right? In lots of different ways. And you can experiment with that. You can explore with that. It's the same thing with ripples in the lake, in the, in the river. We're not trying to paint a river. We're trying to imply movement. We're trying to add movement that makes you think there's a river there. And it can be super loose and messy. This whole time I was very uncomfortable and feeling very, very messy about it. So let's do the loved and learned here. 
First, I loved the color scheme. I love like turquoise blue up against Scarlet Lake, up against the red orange and the yellow orange. I just think it it worked so well because orange and blue are complementary, right? But because we did turquoise blue with all different kinds of orange, it was a fun kind of split complementary pairing and it looks so, so fun. Um, I loved the trunks. I thought the white trunks especially kind of brought everything together. And I really, really like the gradient in the river from dark on the edges to light in the middle. Uh, things that I learned, the middle is a mess. The, mi the middle is so messy and sometimes the end is too. You don't have to paint everything. You just have to paint the impression of the thing, hence the impressionist genre. Um, paint the, f I, I would say, uh, make the background trees maybe a little bit lighter uh, because I think I was trying to do, right, the left side of the trees, I was trying to make them quite light and then the foreground trees quite vibrant. And I don't think I quite got there. I got them a little muddied, but that's okay. I think the depth is still there. Either way, I had a fu really fun time painting this, particularly because I was so scared the whole time. So I hope that you had fun watching and I hope that you have even more fun painting. And I would just love, love, love to see your results. So thanks so much. And I will see you again soon.